This is Melvin Gore, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo-hoo-hoo! It's Friday. Someone had a double shot of espresso over here. What's what's the haps, my man? You're on fire. Friday, October second. Mm. No Fr- haps, Mike. No haps. Fr- it was that that game. It's just uh, yeah. It was the the barn burner. <laughs> that was the kicker battle. That game was fun and terrible and it was like it reminds me of so you, you know like you're it, it's dinner time yeah you're like oh crap i'm hungry i have no idea what to eat yeah i we're we're well past me per- making a meal i'm gonna go through the fridge the pantry and i'm just gonna slop something together and you're like grabbing all these random ingredients you put together it looks disgusting and then you eat it and you're like oh Okay. It's better than uh, I thought it'd be. You're like, okay, I got some nutrition. We hit the over. We had a good time. Yeah, and and the, the, the few fantasy options that you did play actually came through. I mean, if you played Melvin Gordon, I would say he took it up to 100. Yeah. Andy. Um, you know, How long was the, the last run? 43? So that was a 43-yarder? <laughs> Just to add on. Pile it on. You had Crowder have a good game. Jerry Judy had a good game. Look, it was fun, man. Oh. Yeah, and, you had Judy. I did have Judy. Jamison Crowder was fine, like you said. No fam. He got left, injured. Yeah, left early. The so, good news is it, it. They said that it's not. It appears minor, so I I expect he'll he'll be back next game. Sam Darnold, that run. <laughs> what, what was what? Where has that been? Uh, that's called the I'm gonna slide. Just got you. <laughs> defense stopped. Every defensive player kind of thought it was pretend or something. I. Yeah, I quarterback feel, should be practicing the pump fake slide. It's called no respect. That's what it's called. The defense had no respect for Darnold. It's been reported this morning that despite being 0-4 with a negative 66-point differential, Adam Gaze will remain the head coach of the New York Jets. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Uh, in fairness to Adam Gase, he had to play against a third-string undrafted quarterback oh, who yeah. came – to for his first start flying across the country. That's no easy task. It Agreed. Would, what's also no easy task is for uh, B. Rippin over here, Brett the Ripper. He played a fantastic game until like the, the, the final half of the fourth quarter. It was like, he, oh, I, he, he lost all of his powers, forgot how to play football, and just starts turning the ball Last over a bunch. Last night gave me some flashbacks to when I played quarterback in our flag <laughs> football league for multiple reasons. For one... That Sam Darnold run, that was me because mm-hmm. uh, it was so elegant. And they, there was often no respect for your running game? No respect for the running game, <laughs> and somehow I could sneak around. <laughs> and two, the B. Rippin game was pretty much – that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Oh, I you're mean, looking good. Oh, you're throwing it well. What was that? <laughs> My wide receiver did me the favor. That's what Judy did. And, yes. then, and then two just uggo interceptions, which was my kind of – that was my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers, the fantasy footballers.com for the rankings, the start sit tool, the player profiles, join the foot.com for the community. Uh, you also get bonus weekly episodes. The injury blitz comes out today. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Brett the Ripper. <laughs> All right. Every Friday, we give something special away to a supporter over at jointhefoot.com. Today, a signed Allen Robinson jersey mm. goes to Matthew Klusky. Congratulations, Matthew. Thank you for supporting the show. Yeah. And you Mr. can. Klusky. Mr. Klusky. Coming in. Mr. Klutschke is what it should be. Yes, that's right, Jason. Uh, pristineauction.com is where we got that. I bet he hears that all the time. Signed. Uh. Jersey, use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. One announcement before we get into the news. I am pivoting my start of the week. 
<laughs> I'm not going to be caught uh, with Will Fuller's hamstring because this popped up on the injury report late yesterday after I made Will Fuller, who's got this perfect matchup set up for him. Mm -hmm. Here's Will Fuller's hamstring knocking on the door again. I'm not going to – look, he's supposed to play. The report this morning, he's supposed to play. It's a great matchup. If you've got the fortitude to do it, it should work out if he stays healthy and he plays. It's me. <laughs> My, the hamstring. Yes. Don't forget what? about me. <laughs> this, so, like, why is the hamstring cell gear in the Frozen universe? That's, yes. That's 100% <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Big summer blot. <laughs> so I'm going to pivot. Um, I had uh, Joe Burrow as my quarterback start of the week. I'm going to give you Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, oh, start of the week. Stack attack. Last week, 13 targets, 10 receptions, 125 yards. Uh, over the last two weeks, Joe Burrow's understood a simple fact about this offense. When you target Tyler Boyd, it seems to work out. Eight targets, seven receptions two weeks ago, ended up as the wide receiver 10. Last week, the wide receiver 16. This is a great matchup against Jacksonville, so I'll make the pivot, mm. save myself from the uh, <laughs> Swedish hamstring or whatever that was. <laughs> Yoo -hoo, Yoo -hoo. Big hamstring blowout! <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 you no, don't no, want no, a hamstring want blowout. No. News and notes from around the league. All right. We have more COVID news. Oh, come on, man. I'm sorry, Mike. Adam Schefter reporting two more Titans players have tested positive for COVID-19. That is seven total players, six staff members. Mercifully, the league made the right decision, canceled the game. It seems to be contained to one team. And, uh, uh, Mike, you're making a face. We don't have more news, do this, we? No. Okay. No. Well, the, the news is now we have to speculate moving forward. Uh, they have the Bills next week. That game, if yeah. basically Schefter said if more positive cases come this weekend, that game's in jeopardy. Yeah, where we stand right now, uh, the, the, the plan that's been floated so far by the NFL <clears throat> is a very simple, very elegant solution. I think it was you basically have to move the, the Pittsburgh and the Ravens game. Yeah, from and, week seven to week eight. And that was going to take care of the situation. Now, if you're taking two games off of the docket, you really have a competitive problem going for the Titans. And, and there's quite the mosaic puzzle for the NFL to figure out if that happens. We don't know for sure that it will, but we uh, hopefully we don't have to deal with it. Yeah, Major League Baseball had to deal with a more significant multi-team issue. They got through it. They got to the playoffs. The league not playing this game, uh, that it was an important decision. And we're all hopeful that all these players, staff are safe, healthy, and it doesn't yes. spread any further. And we get through it. It's um, 2020 has been a weird one, guys. Yeah, did you did you know that? I've, I've heard, man. Stay safe. Take care of each other. Some in or out questions for the week. Julio Jones, is he going to play? He's trending in the right direction towards playing. I think he will play. Uh, R Russell Gage is someone that is also trending positively through the concussion protocol, so he could be a pivot. What about uh, his teammate, Calvin Ridley? Yeah, I, I believe he plays as well. It's The the Monday night game makes things a little bit difficult here because uh, you have – so like, let's say you're counting on Julio Jones. I guess the pivot is, that I would be looking at is Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Jason's take it up to 100 player because you, you're not sure that Russell Gage is going to play. If if someone has Calvin Ridley, they're also looking at Monday, trying to get their pivot ready. So you you better you better just throw MVS on the bench right now. All I heard was Will Fuller in a bunch of lineups based on this news. Uh, Devonte Adams returned to practice. He did say he wants to be one hundred percent before he plays. Said he will not play one percent under. So if he's not feeling perfect, he will not play. That is scary, but smart. Alan Lazard, this was big news. Yeah. Um, Jason mentioned Marquez Valdez-Scantling yesterday without any knowledge that Alan Lazard was injured, and here, all of a sudden, he's undergone surgery. Yep. Core he muscle surgery out indefinitely. That sucks for the Lazard King coming off clearly his best game of his career. Yeah, and so MVS will be targeted. Those tight ends that got involved last week could be more involved this week, and then Aaron Jones will... I mean, oh, he bears goodness. the yes. burden of this offense right now. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas? Is he going to return? Uh, it, you know, they've said it, it isn't a lock that he's out there. He's practicing in limited fashion. 
it's too early to tell. I'm going to listen to Matthew Betts' injury podcast. Uh, you can listen to that over at jointhefoot.com for the uh, premier tier. Uh, I'm going to listen to him more than me because there's there's really no telling. The timeline says he could get in, but he probably won't be 100%. So I don't know if they'll put him out there or not. Yes, the Saints are the early game on mm -hmm. Sunday, and we'll have a Friday practice report. That's what uh, Betts ends up talking about, all the Friday practice reports on that pod. Jared Cook did not practice on Thursday. That's not good. Hopkins didn't either. DeAndre Hopkins, ankle injury. Cardinals GM Steve Kimes said it will be up to Hopkins to make the decision if he plays. Based on that and Hopkins' history of playing through everything in his career, I expect him to be out there. This was an injury nobody knew about. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not. So that makes it not fair. It, it, it certainly feels does. that way. It does. It's like, wait, what? Hopkins is injured. When did that happen? Yeah, my team uh, in our league of record has Beckham, Hopkins, and Hunt. All three left the game totally fine, according to all the knowledge we had. And eyeballs. And eyeballs. And here's Beckham added to the injury report with a back injury. Hunt didn't practice again on Thursday. They've said it's not serious. But, yeah, but they're they they're not. But they're treating it like it's serious. Also, we did bring up the uh, promotion of Dontrell Hilliard to the team that was in response to a special teamer rookie that they lost. So that was not necessarily for Kareem Hunt. However, it does help them in the situation if Kareem Hunt still continues to miss practices. So TBD. I mean, you got to monitor the Friday practice reports. Make sure you're following our social media account on Twitter. We will put out. All the information there. Yeah, we'll have game day alerts on Sunday. Mike will be live again on Sunday as well with last-minute inactive reports. Terry McLaurin added to the injury report with a thigh issue. It's not a great matchup. He was the one Redskins. Uh, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Washington football team. Yeah, I forgot. We got to get there. <laughs> uh, Terry McLaurin was added. Are you worried about his availability? I think he'll play. All right, Chris Carson, Carlos Hyde, both limited on Wednesday and Thursday. I think maybe both play yeah this is really a wait and see if if Chris Carson is active are you guys just going right back in I mean you probably don't have another choice yeah I, I agree with Andy if if he's active you're gonna end up playing him uh you, what else do we have DJ Chark yeah he's he's practicing but we we will see it, it, like the other, are you playing him if he's active? Because uh, Doug Marone said he's comfortable with him playing this week. I want to see what his practice status is for Friday. It, it, like if if we get a full practice here, then yeah, I'll, I'll put him back in. The only the the other like bigger note here, and this is just a strategy note. Um, Leonard Fort did uh, Leonard Fort <laughs> Leonard <laughs> Fork <laughs> Leonard Fournette did not practice Thursday. We knew from news a couple days ago that all of a sudden it sounds like Leonard Fournette is not going to play. Ronald Jones becomes very, very interesting for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But there was also a quote earlier in this week that I had missed, but it was from head coach Bruce Arians speaking about Keyshawn Vaughn. It says, your time is coming. So and I'm not I'm not calling for Keyshawn Vaughn to break out this weekend, just saying if you've got that empty space and you're looking forward for a strategy early pickup, the, the <laughs> there's what? no guarantee that Ronald Jones is – the safe and great play. I would throw Keyshawn Vaughn on the back of your bench if you have that spot. One of the most common strategies I utilize, I'm sure a lot of listeners do, and if you don't, start doing it. If you have IR spots, what will happen is every Sunday morning, there will be certain players that are ruled out. You know, the, the last couple of weeks, it's been Jamison Crowder who's been questionable, and then, okay, they rule him out. So I throw him to my IR, and I pick up a backup running mm -hmm. back. I pick up some running back that, if an injury happens, I get him before the waiver wire. Keyshawn Vaughn is a name to look for. Hard part there is that we've been completely avoiding the backfield in general. I, I, I get it. So I just don't know what his upside is. Gio I, Bernard, uh, back to pick up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Brooks, can, can you do me a favor? No more injuries, please. Ooh, that'd be can great. Can you sort get on that, that out? I'm working on it, man. I'm trying. We want yeah, good news. George Kittle. You. Yeah. In. Yeah. He's back, baby. And Jarek McKinnon. Yeah. In. Practicing in full. He's All right. back. Yeah, everybody's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Matchup time. Fantasy Forecast.
Arizona Cardinals at two and one take on the Carolina Panthers at one and two. The Cardinals are three and a half point favorites. It's a 51 point over under as Cardinal fans, Arizona residents. I don't want to see the Cardinals offense without Deandre Hopkins. That would be a significant Agreed. downgrade. I think anyone in who's an NFL fan or fantasy football fan does not want to see that happen outside of the Panthers fans. I don't think the Cardinals win the game without DeAndre Hopkins. So that'll be interesting. They are favorites right now. It's a 51 point over under. Okay, Jason, you brought up uh Kenyon Drake as your start of the week. Great opportunity here against the 31st ranked run defense in terms of fantasy points allowed to the running back position, Carolina. They have struggled. This is the game that if you could have any confidence in, in Kenyon Drake, it has to be this one. You have to start Kenyon Drake. You're going to make a mistake if you don't. I realize he's been disappointing. He's gotten a lot of touches, hasn't done enough with them. But if you look at the Carolina defense, okay, they're, they're the 31st ranked on the season. And you go, well, it's only been three weeks, so that can be really skewed. Well, let's look back to last year where they were the 32nd ranked Rush defense. This They've is a, a lot better. This is a lot of games running where they just give up a ton of fantasy points to the running back. If DeAndre Hopkins is in or out and hobbled or less than 100%, they're going to need to rely on Kenyon Drake. He's a must start, and that's why he's my start of the weekend. I will say this I will be very concerned if at the end of this week, Kenyon Drake is the running back, you know, 28 and has uh, 15 touches for 46 yards. I, I will start to get worried. I will be worried. Yeah, fully worried. Yeah. You'll move the panic uh, alarm up a little bit. Yeah, but it's not happening. Every single I, – I feel like this is a make-or-break week for so many players, and another one is DJ Moore here. DJ Moore, Mike started the week at the wide receiver position in this game. Um, real quick, though, Mike Davis, the other running back. Oh, he's a must-play. Is he a must-start as well? Yeah, he, he absolutely. They're, they're treating him like Christian McCaffrey. They're, they're, he's getting the usage. He's getting targets. He's – he, Don't you mean Miles Gaskin? They're treating him like Miles Gaskin. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, DJ Moore has the uh, solid matchup. I think this is another week where you look at DJ Moore and you adjust your opinion of him if he cannot put up a good performance in this game against Arizona. That's fair. Yeah, that is fair. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with Mike on this. The, we drafted these players high for a reason, and what they've shown so far this year – is not that they are busts. It they've just it hasn't happened, but they've been involved, and there's a lot of behind the scenes metrics that say, yeah, just stick with it, and the matchup is great. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what DJ Moore can do if Hopkins misses, if he decides to sit it down. Yeah, that's the big one. Arizona, Kyler Murray, the passing game. We know the pace of play. Arizona runs a lot of no huddle. They get a lot of offensive production from that wide receiver position. Who is the the potential start there outside of DeAndre Hopkins. Is it, it Andy Isabella, who's had a couple of okay weeks? Larry Fitzgerald, who was basically ignored last week. Christian Kirk could be back with the groin injury. It's truly we were we were talking about this at lunch the other day, and we we each picked one of those three guys, which leads me to believe that you probably want to stay away. I mean, if you're looking at one of those players or or MVS, I probably lean I do lean towards MVS. If I were to take one of these players, I think it would be Andy Isabella for the deep big play hope because I think that the range of outcomes for all three of these players is a really bad game. So I'm going to take who I think has the highest upside. Robbie Anderson, is he a solid wide receiver two in this matchup? He's yeah, he's a, Robbie Anderson is getting the volume to be a wide receiver two three every week. Does he deserve to be ranked ahead of DJ Moore on a weekly basis? Uh he could. He he absolutely could. I Working mean his way there. The thing is they're both really I mean, we have a very, very small data set, but their numbers are close. Robbie Anderson has scored though. So that's a that's the bigger difference between the two of them. Kyler Murray is the QB seven on the week in our rankings. He was the QB five, five, and ten through the first three weeks. He seems very safe at the quarterback position right now. What if Hopkins misses? Are you pivoting off of Kyler or not because against of the Carolina? Legs? Yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, he Kyler was a great. He didn't have Hopkins last year, and That's he was true. a great fantasy quarterback. So here's the number that or a stat that speaks to the variance uh, of the Carolina Panthers and DJ Moore. Teddy Bridgewater seventh in passing yards, thirtieth in passing touchdowns like there's Teddy Bridgewater and the receivers are getting it done in yardage we just haven't seen the scores coming do you think that that's a result of 
garbage time for them or, or being a team that's constantly giving it up on the other side? That's uh, it's, it's a good question. It's a good question, but I do believe that DJ Moore comes through with a touchdown this week. All right, before we talk about the Minnesota Vikings and the Houston Texans, I want to remind all the Foot Clan, if you play DFS, the DFS pass has been absolutely kicking butt this year for people out there. If you had the DFS pass and you were looking at the dart throws from last week, guys like Rex Burkhead, Tyler Croft, Hunter Renfro, these players, that before the week, you'd be like, well, nobody would actually pick them, even though they blew up for fantasy. They were in the DFS pass on those dart throw articles. The articles have been amazing. The generator helps you build lineups. You can check it all out at DFSPass.com. You can get it half off and just upgrade if you had the uh, Ultimate Draft Kit. So check it out at DFS Pass. And don't forget the DFS podcast, the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast with Kyle the Boar Gogan mm -hmm. and Matthew Betts. They are crushing it. They had everybody stacking Tyler Lockett last week, getting those three touchdowns in everybody's game. It was fantastic. Check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. And they're passionate about it. They're excited about it each and every week. They really pour in the effort. And it, it, it comes through, when they come through for listeners, yeah, a lot and, of joy. And here's the cool thing about it. We've gotten a lot of feedback this year. We've changed the format. We've put these two guys in charge because we wanted it to be what we've always wanted it to be, which is DFS for the rest of us. They teach you not just like this guy's stats and that. They're teaching you how to play the game better, mm -hmm. how to actually have fun playing DFS and 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 win, which makes it fun. It's not a lot of fun to lose at DFS. So, um, yeah, check it out. You you will have a good time if you can play DFS, the DFS pod. The Minnesota Vikings, 0-3, taking on the Houston Texans, 0-3. Texans are three-and-a-half point favorites. It's a 53-and-a-half point over-under. I do think Houston wins this game. They haven't had very much success or an easy schedule thus far. Minnesota, it, it's just not been pretty. Both of these teams need a win really bad. And it's a pretty pretty nice over-under. Deshaun Watson, you're going to play Deshaun Watson in this game. Mm -hmm. Dalvin Cook, yes, absolutely. David Johnson, the tough schedule. you got to keep that in mind with David Johnson. He is the RB21 through three weeks. So you're saying, okay, maybe not what you hoped. Well, he, he's played Baltimore. He's played Pittsburgh. He's had difficult situations, found his way into the end zone a couple of times. David Johnson's in your lineup. Yeah, yep. he, he very easily could have been a start of the week this week. This is one of those, you know, Kenyon Drake, uh, David Johnson, these two guys are bad couple of weeks. Uh, disappointing, I should say. Not really bad for either, and the matchup is, is very good for both. And Alvin Cook is set up for success this week. I think He's our RB4 by consensus ranking. I think he's my number one overall on the week. Justin Jefferson is one of the big questions in this game. You have a kind of a philosophical view where you don't want to chase points in fantasy. But chasing points for Cedric Wilson is different than looking at a completely changed opportunity for a rookie wide receiver when they break out. Will Justin Jefferson be one of the top scoring receivers of the week? Probably not. But I do believe that what they did fundamentally last week, which was shift his role in the offense, increase his snap count target share, and then saw the results that they saw from it. Look, this team has to throw the football. This is not going they're not going to win with Dalvin Cook in defense. They're going to win throwing the ball. Kirk Cousins has been historically a very competent, accurate passer. I think Justin Jefferson is a player you can start this week against this Houston defense. I, I agree. 78% of snaps last week, nine targets, and they were one point away from winning the game. I mean, it was a very, very close game with that. When you have a breakout to the tune of 175 yards as a first-round draft pick, you don't go away. You don't You don't move from that. Obviously, he's not going to do this week in and week out, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting Justin Jefferson. I, If you grab Justin Jefferson, you paid a lot of fab. Or you burned your highest waiver priority to get him. So, yeah, he's in, he's in my Mike, lineup. Mike, if you had to choose Terry McLaurin, we have that injury tweak. We've got Baltimore or, or Justin Jefferson. Terry McLaurin. Yeah, Terry McLaurin. I, I, but I was going to bring up a couple names for you, Andy. Okay. A.J. Green versus Jacksonville or the rookie Justin Jefferson. I'll probably play Jefferson. Brandon Cooks on the other side of the of the, the ball from Justin Jefferson. Great matchup against Minnesota. Will Fuller, variance, hamstring, I'll play Justin Jefferson. Okay. I would go Cooks, Jefferson, A.J. Green. Cooks is Cooks is sitting one for three right now, which is the same thing Justin Jefferson yeah. is doing. But, uh, 
Yeah, I, I understand people going either it, either way. Justin there. Jefferson is so tough. For we don't know me. the floor for him right now yet. Yeah, well, the the floor is two for twenty six. Like it, that, that's I don't like chasing points, and I really don't like chasing rookie points. Uh, but the the situation is there. He's he is supposed to be this guy. He was drafted to be the Stephon Diggs replacement. The New York Giants at zero three take on the Los Angeles Rams at two and one. Rams are heavy favorites, thirteen points. It's a forty eight point over under. It gives the Rams a 31-point implied point total. The Giants just under 18. I don't really see this game <laughs> oh, going against man. the script right the, now. The, the script question marks are Daniel Jones. I, I, I fully believe the Rams will do on offense whatever they want to do on offense. I think that uh, Daryl Henderson is going to have a great game, Mike's start of the week, and if – they need, or early enough, if Woods and Cup can get involved, I think, look, I'm starting all my Rams because right now, Sean McVay has gotten this team, they're the number one in pass and rush success rate. They're just playing great. So the question marks to me are on the New York Giants side of the ball. Uh, are, you know, the, the, the Daniel Jones in a multi-quarterback league, can you start him in this matchup? Uh, you know, Devonta Freeman, you picked him up. What, how bad does it have to be in order to play him and then you've got guys like Slayton and Golden Tate that, I mean if you're down 13 points and you're throwing the ball there there should be fantasy relevance here Jamison Crowder last night got it done who gets it done for the Giants nobody someone will get it done <laughs> uh, not necessarily I mean I, I get it with the Crowder Crowder is easier if there's one man right it, the the Jets and the Giants are the two worst scoring offenses in football the mental, my perception of the Giants is different than my perception of the Jets. I think about the Jets, and I think complete ineptitude on offense. Adam Gaze, they can't move the football. When I think of the Giants, I go, oh, man, exciting. Daniel Jones, he's kind of like Winston. He airs it out. Somebody's going to have a big game. It hasn't equated to points on the field. And playing the Rams right now, you know, Jalen Ramsey roaming uh, on one of these guys. Are you going to take Slayton away and then say, okay, Golden Tate's the guy? I mean – I just have a lot of hesitancy here. I think I am, other than Evan Ingram as a tight end flyer, right. I am. I think I'm completely out on the Giants. It's just my approach. That's, I don't want to play the game. That's where I am. I'm with Andy. That Evan Ingram, I think you can play him. The Rams 21st against fantasy tight ends right now. Daniel Jones is being pressured a league high over 41% of the time. I think the MVP of this game will be Aaron Donald. Like Daniel Jones, sometimes it, you're right, Jay. Sometimes someone comes through and they get it done. But there's also sometimes where an offensive line is so atrocious and so overly matched that nobody ever gets anything going for that offense. And I'm gonna, if I'm going with anyone, Evan Ingram has the seventh most targets at the tight end position. He has not come through at all. So he is a, he's a streamer option at best but that's the only where i'm going o only place i'm going these running backs no freaking way yeah no am i way. playing anyone from this backfield the giants have scored 38 points total on the season and if you want to know how bad it gets when it gets bad i mean darius slayton had the impressive debut against pittsburgh the last two weeks his snap counts have gone up from that game mm -hmm. I think he had nine targets last week three uh he's seven seven uh three for 33 three for 53 Went from the number four wide receiver to 82nd and 69th. Nice. The The risk is just so high. It doesn't mean that Slayton can't come down with a couple. Yeah, so that means basically if, if this game script goes the way Vegas and the way that we are uh, projecting, it is 100% a Darnell Anderson game. You must play <laughs> Darnell Anderson. Darnell Anderson. And that, if you don't know be, who of course, Darnell Anderson is, that's Daryl Henderson. Yeah, the, the best nickname the only of player, all time. The only player who has a completely different name is his nickname. Uh, Mike start of the week, uh, Daryl Henderson. He's going to smash. Yeah, and we know that Cam Akers is not likely to be active in this game. The difference between Henderson and Malcolm Brown. Brown could get some goal line carries and make you annoyed. I think Malcolm Brown's contract says he's only allowed to score in week one, but he gets to do it multiple times, multiple years. He Can, can he try in other weeks but fail? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, auto starts, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. Yep, yep. Yep. Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett. Some interesting uh, – Evan Silva tweeted, 
the snap counts have gone down for Tyler Higby significantly from his breakout period of time last year. He was 73% in that run. He's at 53% right now. Routes run last week, Higby 12, Everett 10 at the tight end position. So they, they are spreading it around a little bit. Higby is always a threat to score. And you talk about a matchup like this, I mean, I'd rather have him in my lineup than not, probably. Tyler Higby? Yeah. I agree. All right, the New England Patriots at 2-1 and one take on the 3-0 and o Kansas City Chiefs. This one's going to be exciting. This is going to be fun. You've got Patrick Mahomes and Cam Newton showering praise upon one another to reporters. Oh, do we got a compliment fest? Yeah, a compliment oh, oh, oh. fight. Yeah, they Who's are going to win the war of kindness? No, 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 no. After you. No, no, no. After you. I love what you do with your hair, Cam. <laughs> yeah, they are both big fans of one another. But are you guys a fan of uh, the booty scooter? I... And did that drop change your your statistical projections? I am concerned for Cam Newton in this matchup. I they Kansas City can shut down the passing game. They're going to be handing it off to running backs a lot on the Patriots side of the ball. That will be the game plan. It's going to come down to can Cam does Cam get those carries inside the five? He probably still will, but how many of those opportunities are going to actually show up? in this game. So I I have Cam Newton everywhere and I am strongly considering in some leagues, pivots. A pivot like if I can get Ryan Fitzpatrick against Seattle, I am strongly considering making that move. But Oh my but goodness, Mike, the voice of public opinion. But Cam Newton's been running and they'll be down and he'll have lots of fantasy points. He might. I'm just very concerned about it this week. Well, I want to point out that the mobile rushing quarterback fantasy extraordinaire who was down and you wanted a lot of fantasy points from last week is a better version currently in 2020 of Cam Newton, and that was Lamar Jackson. You were not happy with that fantasy performance. So to speak to Mike's point, I, I do think this is a pivot week from Cam. Cam was the 28th ranked quarterback last week. Against Las Vegas. Really? He was It was that bad? Really bad. 17 for 28, 162 yards, one touchdown, nothing on the ground. Oh, so, yeah, because freaking Sexy Rexy was stealing all the glory. Yeah, yeah and, and also because they – I mean, it was an easy cakewalk game. They didn't need much from Cam. Easy, easy W. 36 to 20. Yeah, I think that there's some garbage time potential here for Cam in this game, but you're not, you know – the big, the big week he had when he threw for 397 yards, that was against the Seattle secondary. You're not going to have that same experience here. He will need other wide receivers to step up this year to be consistent in the passing game. It can't just be Julian Edelman. He's going to need Nikhil Harry to step up or you're not going to get that kind of yardage. Sonny Michelle, James White, Rex Burkhead. <sighs> gross. <laughs> gross, gross, gross. Here's the thing. Rex Burkhead was great while James White was not there. Now James White is back at practice. So you go, well, can I trust Rex Burkett? I'm not sure. I don't think I can. Sony Michelle has actually been better than you think. He's averaging like nine Definitely and a half. better than Al Borland thinks. <laughs> yeah, Al Borland hates that guy. Um, you know, he's he's been averaging about nine and a half fantasy points per game. Uh, one of the better yards per carry in the league right now, but he's been limited on... Wednesday and Thursday with a quad. I don't know if there's anyone here that you can trust. And and this is speaking as a man who whose desperation has caused him to have Sony Michelle in his League of Record lineup. Well, that's because you lost uh, James Conner suddenly with the, mm -hmm. with the COVID Christian game. Christian McCaffrey. I mean, there's just these snap counts of 30%, 21%, 38%. For I'm, Sony. For Sony Michelle. I'm, I'm out. Are you... Give me your reaction to Clyde Edwards Alaire's debut. Three weeks into the year, he's he was the RB ten, the RB thirty, the RB twelve. We haven't seen, you know, that explosion game, but he's sure. heavily involved. How how are you feeling about Clyde three weeks in? I I'm feeling fantastic about Clyde. The he's getting tons of opportunities. You know, his debut, twenty seven opportunities, eighteen, twenty six, and like he's coming through. He's He's had two RB1 games already. Two, two thirds of his games have been as a running back one. And that's with one touchdown. One touchdown. And that's, that's the outlier for 
a Kansas City running back. That's why we know they are so good, is that the running backs have huge opportunities to score touchdowns all the time. So the fact that Clyde Edwards-Alaire is getting the opportunities, especially through the passing game, and is, and is coming through and not scoring touchdowns, I would be very happy to have him on my team. And if some, if, if you if someone in your league is a little bit shook by it because they're seeing other options uh, have like really explosive games, oh, please, I will trade immediately for Clyde. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been disappointing on the ground the last couple weeks as far as efficiency goes. Hasn't even hit four per carry, but he's been fine for fantasy, and the reality is he's on pace for 378 opportunities. That number is alarmingly high. It's absurd. And it's for a great offense. So, yeah, I'm I'm not too worried. At, you know, he wasn't my favorite prospect coming into, if you remember, pre-draft. I, I was not in on the hype until the location, and then I was completely in. But it doesn't matter. He's going to be absolutely fine week in and week out for fantasy because of this offense. Tyree Kill is a must start, obviously. Mm -hmm. I assume we're starting Edelman on the other side just based on how he's played. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but not with enthusiasm. Nope, definitely not. Put these players in order. Sammy Watkins, McCole Hardman, Nikhil Harry. McCole Hardman, Nikhil Harry, Sammy Watkins. Agreed. Okay. Watkins was active last week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he was. Eight targets. You never know when the Lizard King's going to do something. But your big plays come from McCall Hardman? Right. And, you know, you, you, not, eight targets from Patrick Mahomes sounds great. Yeah. But seven for 62, that's 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 okay. You're not, you're not you know, you slamming the that. desk. Yeah. But, you know, when, when all of a sudden then you look over and it's like uh, two catches for 100 yards and two touchdowns from McCall Hardman. Just 39% snap count last week with uh, Watkins back down from 65% the week before with him gone, but he had the big play. Almost had a second one. Kelsey, yep, okay. The Buffalo Bills, 3-0, and taking on the Las Vegas Raiders at 2-1. and The Bills are three-point favorites. It's a 52.5 point over under. And, uh, well, you know, we know the story. We know that you're starting oh, Josh Allen. Excellent. The Bills have been impressive thus far. The Raiders, Very. the Raiders are two and one, coming off of a a beating at the hands of the Patriots. They're also hurt. I mean, no Henry Ruggs and no uh, Brian Edwards. You might say, okay, well, these guys haven't done a whole lot. No big deal. Well, they they mattered quite a bit when they're out there on the field and Henry Ruggs is stretching the field and there's opportunities underneath. Those are afforded to Hunter Renfro and to Darren Waller by the the deep routes of these other players and whether or not you respect. Nelson Aguilar, it's it's a little different. And we saw last week, Mike, you you either tweeted this or shared it with me. The Patriots double covered the underneath routes yeah. <laughs> for Derek Carr, <laughs> making his life literally impossible. He's like, wait, the, the check down is gone? I don't know what to do. Super gone. So Josh Jacobs, he's the RB8 on the year. You're playing Josh Jacobs, averaging 22.7 rush attempts per game. Zach Moss is supposed to be back. We think he'll be back. Are you playing Singletary and or Moss this week, running backs for the Bills? I uh, It I, sucks because the matchup is there. You should want to play the starting running back for the Buffalo Bills, and I I don't really I am, want to. I am absolutely fine starting Devin Singletary. Singletary, okay. Yeah, I, I think we, with, with Moss banged up with this matchup against the Raiders, uh, I would I would – be absolutely fine I mean obviously it's a matter of who you have maybe this is just speaking as a man who has Sony Michelle in his lineup right now I'm like <laughs> give me all the Devin Singletary I can handle but I think with the matchup you you can start him with with they, they a say decent confidence they say the grass is greener on the other side and when you have Sony Michelle active in your lineup it is actually true all other grass is greener yes. in that situation like, was that turf that <laughs> thing's green forever look at that yellow field that's <laughs> super green <laughs> Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller have not been on practice reports. They are healthy. You can put the Wallers in, right? Oh, yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, Last week was tough for Wallers owners. So, all right, Tyler Croft, big week last week. Farewell, goodbye, one-timer. That's, yeah. Stephon Diggs, yep, put him in your lineup. Anybody now, else in this uh, matchup that you're looking at? Now, John Brown, uh... You know he's 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 had a couple plays here and there. We he is limited in practice. He and with 
with what Josh Allen is doing here, just ripping off three, 400 yard games, are you going with John Brown or no. because he's banged up? Are you taking a shot? Are you going Cole Beasley? The Beasles it, infected with a hundred yard game last week. If I had to take one of those two, it would be Beasley. You saw the first two weeks. John Brown was, was great. Then he got injured. There was a lot of worry. He wasn't going to play last week. He had two targets for no catches and no yards. And now he's, you know, not really practicing in full right now. I'm, I, I don't, you cannot rely on John Brown right now. The Philadelphia Eagles at 0-2-1 take on the San Francisco 49ers at 2-1. I don't know if you guys have looked at the standings. The no. uh, the NFC East standings against yeah. the NFC West standings. Um, well, the, one of the reasons is the West keeps playing all the East teams. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, not fair. The Redskins are winning the division. The Washington football team, the well, Eagles... I, Man. How am I doing this twice today? <laughs> the Eagles. Maybe Mark Rippon's coming to mind, and I'm going back in time. The more impressive thing to me than Washington leading the division is that the Eagles are a half game out of first. They haven't won a game. They're winless, and they are a half game out of first. What a trash division. I think it also just settles it. Uh, West Coast is the best is, coast. West Coast is better than the East Coast. Take That's that. Right. East Coasters. <laughs> Luckily, the Eagles, they navigated a, a tie to position themselves to within half a game. 29th in yards per play, the Eagles this year. 29th in pass success rate. It's been a chicken or the egg situation for Carson Wentz for quite some time now. Does Wentz stink or does he stink because he has to target Hightower and Greg Ward? We may never know. Uh, well, we here's what we know. We know he stinks when he has to target those as his main receivers yesterday's practice literally only greg ward was active that was the only wide receiver on the 53-man roster who was at practice at all even as a limited participant that's ridiculous he has missed he's missing you know three original starters from the offensive line you can't trust carson wentz at all in the slightest he doesn't have time to throw to nobody you know who i think we can finally trust though zach Ertz. I, how, how are you feeling about Zach Ertz? Yeah, this I mean, week, you Jeff? have to start Zach Ertz. You you drafted him in the you know the well, high I mean, middle rounds. We've had to, but it's been very disappointing. Well, with Dallas Goddard out of the way, all of these wide receivers out of the way, the rapport over the years that he has with Ertz. I mean, where where else is he going with the ball? So yeah, yeah I, you you have to trust Zach Ertz this week. Greg Ward, I think you can spot start this week. Probably. I know the matchup's not great, but Greg Ward last week heavily targeted. He's somebody that I picked up in League of Record as a an emergency pivot for DeAndre Hopkins in case Hopkins misses the game. What do I want as a replacement for a superstar? I want targets, and he had 11 last week. Greg Ward did. There aren't many options, and with Dallas Goddard being gone as well, it's probably Ertz, and it's probably Ward and Miles Sanders. It's Miles Sanders, who's – Miles Sanders, since coming back from the injury, is getting – 26 and a half opportunities per game. He was limited Wednesday and Thursday. He's Ooh. right right now he's a little butt hurt. So de 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 that, glute, injury. that glute is what he's listed at. Any of you you guys ever pulled a, a glute? I have How do you I don't think I've ever pulled a glute, but I've I've had like a a butt strain. I've certainly you, sat you too strain, long you strain. and been like oh. Have you tweaked a, have you tweaked, tweaked yeah, a glute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glute tweak. So you've strained, you've tweaked, you haven't pulled what I mean, are the, I don't, I what don't are the difference not between a doctor, these? man. But at Bro the, Brooks, how's your glutes? Just fine. Okay. He must work out. <laughs> um, the, the, but you're starting Miles Sanders. You know, unless he's shockingly not active, you you pretty much have to start him, and he should be involved in the passing game for all the other aforementioned reasons. I mean, this is a this team is just in trouble. Is there any almost upset potential here with well, Nick Mullins starting at quarterback and all the injuries that the there should 40 be. I mean, the, the the you know, I forget who it was that was calling the San Francisco 49ers the 29ers because they've got about half of their team right now. You're you're missing Bosa and Solomon Thomas on the defense and, and Richard Sherman and you're starting quarterback and, and Debo Mostert Samuel and, and Mostert. Coleman and I mean, this is really insane that they're they're favored by more than a touchdown with their literal B team out there. But I... I'm pretty sure I took the, the the them to cover. Um, McKinnon is a good start. Yep. I think the question is, Brandon Ayuk, can you get another week out of him? Probably not. not. Yeah, I'm not relying on him. He's got the uh, Darius Slay matchup this week. Here's a, here's a fun stat for you. 
Only two quarterbacks in NFL history have thrown for 2,600 passing yards and 14 touchdowns in their first nine career starts. Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, he's great. Nick Mullins. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a very competent. I mean, Nick Mullins uh, was in the dreams of both head coaches that played last night in terms of having them behind center or him behind center for those teams. He's He's good. Yeah, I, I've never watched him and felt like he can't handle the job, which is why they're favored by seven and a half points. Yeah. Uh, George Kittle has been practicing in full. He's ready to go. He's back and healthy. He's obviously a, a must start and a very thankful start. Anybody who's been dealing with the pivots while they while he's been injured, congratulations. Also, You've got George Kittle back. 49ers fans will disagree with me on this, but as a Cardinal fan, Really wish the beat up 49ers could have been playing teams that weren't the Jets, Giants, and Eagles these <laughs> yeah. past three weeks, as they're going to run off probably another huge win. Monday night football. Oh, yes. Monday night. The Atlanta Oof, it's gonna be hot. Falcons at 0 3 take on the 3 0 Packers. The Falcons fans, as if they haven't suffered enough, will now get to hear about what has happened on national TV throughout the game. That will mm. be. How many times are we going to hear about what's happened to the Falcons over oh, the course of that night? Um, I think they've got it on a 90-second timer. So uh, however long the game is divided by 90 seconds should be your answer. Every 28 minutes and then every three minutes and then every 28 oh, minutes and then every three minutes. Uh, but Monday night football. That's a low blow, Andy. <laughs> I, I was joking at lunch with you guys. Like this is the only team that you, you like, what's the point of football to get a get a nice big lead right yeah you don't right. want that if you're the falcons but the falcons like you don't feel safe ever until no. triple zeros you don't want to be down obviously and you also don't want to be up so let's just have a close <laughs> game. this just in the right. falcons have decided not to participate in monday night football no all right the packers are seven point favorites though it's a 56 and a half point over under atlanta games have been good for fantasy football purposes Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, are you playing both? Rodgers loses Lazard, could not have Adams, and does it change if Adams is not out there? Not one bit. Uh, it, I know that so far this year, it has been a mistake to start these quarterbacks without their Michael Thomas, without their Kenny Galladay, and so here, maybe the lesson needs to be learned, and I deserve to be slapped in the face. But what we saw last season some of Aaron Rodgers' best games came without Devontae Adams, not because other guys stepped up, but because the matchups were fantastic. The matchup is fantastic. There's a 56 and a half point over under. I, f you know, I mean, this is this, the points will be flowing here, and this is prime time. Aaron Rodgers is going to have that chip on his shoulder and play fantastic in prime time. Whoever it is uh, that's out on the field will be catching the ball, and I, I'm starting both quarterbacks. In all situations. Marquez Valdez Scantling this week, Jason. You're taking it to 100 player or Greg Ward from the previous matchup. I would take MVS. I think the opportunity will be there and, and primetime Aaron Rodgers is, is as good as it gets. You agree with that, Mike? I do, yeah. You would go MVS? Okay. And a slight correction on what I just said. I said I'd start both quarterbacks no matter what the situation. I think if you are missing julio jones or if you're missing the other two if you know unless you've got the wide receivers there i'm not sure i would start matt ryan the green bay packers defense is is legit this team is is good and i i deserve to apologize to them because i thought last year i deserve <laughs> to apologize <laughs> yes i i think that's correct no 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 look i deserve this now that, that makes you, sense sometimes you deserve that something sense. that is but you deserve a punishment right I, I they guess. deserve an apology yes. would have been the proper <laughs> way sounds, to say that. That sounds so much better, Andy. Yeah. Why didn't I say that? <laughs> but I apologize to the Packers because last year I thought it was just this mirage and a sham. And so far, I mean, this is where they're going to completely collapse now. And no, then I will deserve not. the apology. Man, you really that you deserve that, Jay. Take your moment. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the Packers opponents averaging just 55, <laughs> 55 plays per game. That's 29th in the NFL. I think that's a combination of a pretty solid defense combined with long drives from Aaron Rodgers, third down conversions, taking up the clock, Aaron Jones, who's great. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind if you are missing a wide receiver. And Matt Ryan last week, you know, it was a struggle without Julio Jones. 27th last week after 
two top 10 finishes for Matt Ryan. So what you said in different word order than normal mm -hmm. is absolutely <laughs> right about this game. Matt Ryan might be somebody you pivot away from if Ridley is out of this game. The tough thing is that it's Monday Night Football. So I'll give you my example. On my dynasty team, I've got Matt Ryan in the lineup right now, and I've got Julio Jones uh, you know, to stack. But if Julio didn't play, I would want to pivot to Joe Burrow. Except I'm not sure if I'll know yet or if Julio's going to be a game-time decision. What would you do in I would that play situation? Burrow. I would just play him. Oh, man. I think you're right. <laughs> this is 100% oh, your dynasty situation, right? This is 100% what I'm dealing with. The, the injuries have not been kind to me this year. You saw how bad it can be for Matt Ryan last week. The Packers are a great team. Matt Ryan, what does he do? He doesn't give you garbage time. He just plain doesn't. He doesn't know how. It, it is interesting. And the A note I want to throw out here because I've been very negative on him for the draft season and fantasy football I think that Todd Gurley is in a really good spot here. Todd Gurley is a he is a strong running back to play this week, despite Brian Hill having the, a, a big game last week and other guys getting on the field. I would be playing Todd Gurley if I had him I with full confidence. I completely agree with you, Mike. We were looking at his, his numbers yesterday. Um, he was pretty good last week, 5.7 a carry, and the Packers give up 5.4 a carry. And if you're missing a wide receiver, that's possibly more involvement. Slow the game down. Don't give the ball to Aaron Rodgers. I'm with you. On yeah, the that. opportunities have been there for him. 14 carries, 21 carries, 14 carries, and uh, seven <laughs> targets on the season. What are you doing with Hayden Hurst? Uh, I would play Hawkinson over him. I would okay. play Schultz over him. I would play Ingram over him. All right. So it sounds like we are not playing Hurst. I'm not excited to play him either. I'm just checking because you have the you have the variance of what's going on with the wide receivers, but. He hasn't really been coming through, and the tie, and the Packers are pretty strong I, against the tight end through three I weeks. I see a note in here from Kyle, the editor in chief, the Borgogan himself, and he wants me to he wants me to ask the question: Are you starting Robert Tanyan Harding? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I couldn't decide if that one's worth bringing to light, but it is the Fancy Footballers podcast, so uh, the is, answer is no. I'm not starting Tanyan Harding. No, maybe in a DFS you know, uh, dart throw type of play, sure, but He's not in a normal. scored in two weeks, back to back. Yeah. Yep. He's missing. <laughs> yeah. I, if I had to choose between yeah. Robert Tanyan Harding and Hayden Hurst, I would go Hayden Hurst. Okay. All right. I think we're done with that game. There is a, uh, there's an update. Oh, be a good one. The Titans, Steelers will be played in week seven, officially. All Sorry. right. So that will mean that the Steelers are not playing the Ravens in Week Seven. That game that will, will move to Week Eight, their previous bye. Yeah, most, so again, you don't have a bye week Week Eight where you thought you had with the Steelers. Correct. All right. Don't forget game day uh, alerts. Join the foot.com. Mike will be live one hour before Sunday kickoff on Sunday live on all of our social media platforms. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, our favorite week four props from Monkey Knife Fight. You can participate in the fun, the and enjoyment. you should. Ballerspicks.com. Go to ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get 100% deposit match. You'll get to play in tons of these more to, or less. Up to 50 bucks. Up to 50 bucks. You'll get to play in tons of these amazing props, which is a lot of fun. This week, in every week, we, we pick our favorites. Last week, nailed it. Derrick Henry. Big game. This week, Aaron Jones, Monday Night Football. I'm taking the more. The line is set at 71 okay. and wow. a half rushing yards. Variant. That's a lot of yards. That's a lot of yards. The Monday Night Football game, he's averaging 101 a game this year. This team, with the injuries at wide receiver, I have even more confidence that Aaron Jones will be the centerpiece. So I'm going to take the more, just like I did last week with Derrick Henry. Worked out. Uh, that, all right. I mean, that he it's is. A, it's a decent line. It is. Well, I mean, he's averaging way over that, but he's also only crossed that threshold once. A 75-yard yep. Out of three run. weeks, I mean. Yeah. No, I, I'm just saying that, that that's a bold take. I'm going with Daryl Henderson. His more or less is set at what's – I'm just laughing because <laughs> yours is Daryl Henderson, 67 and a half rushing yards, which um, – is, yeah. I mean, it's a very similar. Look, it's way under 70, it's man. It's a similar line to mine that you were very <laughs> flabbergasted at, but go ahead. Daryl Henderson, 67 and a half. I am taking the more. The Giants are allowing 
over 120 rushing yards per game. Daryl Henderson, since becoming the starting running back for the the most run heavy team in the league, he is averaging six yards per carry. He is showing off why they drafted him in the third round two years ago. I think he crushes. The, I really the wanted over to. I really anymore. wanted to come to you, Mike, and say, yeah, but he's only done it one time this year. But he's actually done it twice. That's yeah. right, and he. Didn't he wasn't really around in week one, right? Yeah, that's correct. correct. So he's done in a hundred percent of his real games. I am not. You heard it here first. Daryl Henderson, greater sign. Aaron Jones, according to Mike. Um, here's here's the thing. I'm not saying that I've never missed a layup before. I have, but layups, you've missed quite a few, if I recall. That layups are actually something you struggle with. But it was okay. So now we're getting off on a tangent. But yeah, I mean, I was. This I, why did I bring this up? Yeah, because you, what you're going to say is I was so that good at you could get to the hoop, but you can't finish. Oh, I could get to the hoop at will. I I burn right past you with a little Tim Hardaway crossover. Oh, you you couldn't do the layup? And then <laughs> he just oh. he's just <laughs> or I'd go in the he, post and I'd spin and I'd get this wide open he's layup. He's famous and I for blowing the layup. I, so, dude, oh, well, this is bad news because I'm taking a layup. Right. I was here. there with you. I mean, I was never great at basketball, and part of that is cuz the concept of the layup made no <laughs> sense. I would just It evaded I would, you? I would gently just toss the ball up, and that thing would hit the backboard and launch past the court. <laughs> you're too strong. Yeah. Oh, All right. So goodness. here's what you're gonna do when 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 you see my uh, probat like as ha, you're going to slam dunk this so that you don't miss the layup. Because there you go. To me, this line is a layup. I am. Which taking in your defense, if you could have dunked, you would have dunked instead of laid it up. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and you can dunk on this, Devonte Parker more. Then four and a half receptions. They're playing the Seahawks. Devontae Parker okay. has Could a be a first share. quarter number. I mean, so here's the thing. He's been playing injured the last couple weeks. And the last couple weeks, he's had more than four and a half receptions in both games. Now he's got four and a half re reception line against the Seahawks, who you know that the uh, Dolphins are going to have to throw the ball a lot. In fact, he's had fewer than four and a half receptions in only four out of his last 14 games. That's a 71% hitting that more number, and I am taking it, and I'm dunking it. <laughs> because and you don't want to. Because wanna... I will miss the layup, but I will make the slammy dunk. The slammy dunk it is. You deserve to make the slammy dunk. I deserve dunk. to slam this ball. Uh, the Ballerspicks.com is the website if you want to participate and get that 100% deposit match up to $50 on Monkey Knife Fight. All right, a couple updates. Chris Carson, excellent week of practice. Expected to play, according to Pete Carroll. Okay. Wow. All right. Hey, Kareem Hunt, return to practice on Friday. All right. Yes, let's go. Uh, Scotty Miller back at practice today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leonard Fournette out. Oh, oh, oh he's out. Yeah. All right. Well, th that's actually great news. Chris Godwin's out, too. Um, officially well we already we knew. knew that yeah, yeah, knew. The, the godwin being out that that was already known but leonard fournette being out is is really good news because it means not for can, leonard as much sure but for fantasy clarity you can start ronald jones and without this it's not like you could have started leonard fournette so i i think the you know the matchup is pretty good terry mclaurin limited at practice today so we'll have to monitor mm -hmm. does it concern you not really okay doesn't concern Mike. All right, Sunday Live, one hour before kickoff. Mike will be live with the latest Terry McLaurin news exclusively. And uh, thank you for listening and supporting the show this week. Goodbye. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.